And we have not mentioned any of the actual big games for the weekend. I'm going to break the seal. I'm going to give the people what they really want. Ohio State, Notre Dame. Ohio State is a team that is going to score 40 points per game minimum on a weekly basis. You are not going to stop them. You might slow them down a little, but you're not going to stop them. The key to beating Ohio State is going to be, can you score enough points to keep up with them? I don't think Notre Dame can. I think Notre Dame's got a new quarterback. I don't think they have an explosive playmaker on the exterior, on the uh, outside the numbers to really help push the ball down the field. I think Michael Mayer is a very good tight end, but he's not a big play tight end. He's not the kind of guy who's going to turn a five-yard pass into a 70-yard touchdown. He's not the kind of guy that's going to exploit Ohio State's defensive weakness the last few years in the secondary. Ohio State, minus 17, lock it up. This game's probably over halfway through the third quarter. Lock it up. Hey, there we go. Chip's frozen, so he's in control of our Let the Children Sing. <laughs> Whee! Whee! <laughs> Yay! We I'm get- with you. Um, I think this is going to be a coming out party of sorts for Ohio State. They've taken so much heat and criticism for what happened last year against Oregon and Michigan. They bring in Jim Knowles for a reason. I think they will be mentally and physically tougher on the defensive side of the ball. Feels like a big number, but I don't think it's going to be that big towards the end of the game. I think they pull away late in this one, Um, which is why I also have a two-for-one special. Yes. Give me the under on this one. I think their defense is going to shut down Notre Dame's offense. And, you know, Tommy Reese is back, but they're going with the quarterback, Ty Buckner. I just – and I feel like – Notre Dame probably wants to try to slow the game down. I think they probably want to try to run the football and play keep away somewhat. But even if they limit the possessions, I don't think they're going to stop that Ohio State uh, offense. So give me the under as well, which is at 59 59 and a half. half. Yeah. Play the children for me and Danny, our lock agreement on Ohio State. Thank you. There we go. I, I, I thought about going work hedge Notre Dame. (laughs) <laughs> and by work hedge, I mean, if this game is a blowout, as it expects, then, hey, we get to do get our, our instant reaction show prep going. We might even be able to get the show started. But to lose a lock and also be up later than you want to be because this thing's in double <laughs> overtime, like, come on. Listen, the work hedge principle is real, okay? You figure out what's going to work best for your clock. And then you maybe, you know, create a, a financial or lock opportunity to uh, to benefit otherwise. Ultimately, I'm staying away here. I'm manifesting an early reaction pod. <laughs> I'll go to the other uh, big game. Give me Georgia, and I'll lay every one of them. Is it seven? Do I get a 17, or do I have to go with 17 and a half? Uh, the best I could uh, find you hold on right now. 17? Yeah, you can get a 17. There's like yep. three or four of them. Yep. Yeah, Georgia minus 17. I do, how, how many wins does Bo Nix have against Georgia? No, none. none. Yeah, zero. I I don't know how many points Oregon's going to score in this game, and I think that Georgia can running back and tight end their way to a twenty point win. Like the the model for the way that Georgia can win this game, because I I think Oregon's got a very talented defense, but go back to last year, and it was kind of middling, right? I mean, was was Oregon's defense awesome when they played Utah twice? Like, was Oregon's defense awesome when they would still get pushed around just a little bit? And we do have Dan Lanning coming in, and there's some plus value there. But I think that the the Kentucky-Georgia game last year was, like, the ideal way that you get beat, where it's, like, 0-0 at the end of the first quarter. Oh, my gosh, look, they're they're hanging in there. Then all of a sudden, it's, like, 14-7 to at halftime. Oh, my gosh, is Kentucky going to do it? They're, like, bang, bang, two explosive plays. They've got the leverage, and they just squeeze you out, boa constrictor, the rest of the way. And I I see something very similar to that. I think that Georgia won't be winning by 17 at the end of the first quarter, but it's going to be a game where that elite athleticism that they have, all Stetson Bennett needs is like two explosive plays downhill when somebody falls asleep in that Oregon secondary. And this game's going to be out of control. So I'm going to take Georgia and I'm going to lay every single one of those points. I think they win this game by 20. Found just 16 and a half, by the way. Yeah, Yeah, let's go. By the way, a couple of people I see chiming in on the chat saying, hey, where are they getting these numbers? We shop around. There's several sites that list all the books available. So if you want to find if some you guys, of those. Like, 
I got, I'm, I'm looking up here at Unabated. I think they do a pretty good job. It's a lot cheaper. Like if you guys really want to shout out for something, it's a lot cheaper than like, you know, a, a Dom best. Like if you have $500 a month to throw on something, like it's considerably cheaper. You can see everything. Of course we love Caesars, but they also have like, you know, Penny, uh, you know, Chris, Vandal MGM, all, all, all those. If you're looking for the team totals, DK puts their team totals out, real, not Danny Canal, but like, you know, Drap K uh, puts their team totals out real early. Rivers has the them. Caesars has some. Right. They're, they're definitely out there right now. All right. Well, I've got another play on that game, Chip, that's somewhat similar to yours, but I'm not taking Georgia Lay in the points. I'm just taking the under because I'm with you in that I don't know how many points Oregon is going to score on the Bulldogs in this game with Bo Nix at QB. I have some, I think, reasonable skepticism there. But I also don't think George is just going to come out and light it up against Oregon either because, yeah, Utah was able to put points on the board against Oregon, but I still think that this is – a solid defense. I think there's a lot of talent, particularly in the front seven, returning on that defense that I think kind of it can't stop Georgia because I think Georgia is going to be stronger than it in the long run, but can slow it down and limit what Georgia's best at offensively. So I don't think the Bulldogs are going to score a ton of points. I don't think Oregon's going to score a ton of points. I think this is going to be two defensive teams putting their defenses forward. So give me Georgia, Oregon under 53. I've really thought about this game a lot, and I, I know we got to keep the show moving. I just, I think Oregon can really bang with Georgia on the lines of scrimmage, but I don't know if I like any of Oregon's receivers against Georgia's DBs, and I don't really like Oregon's DBs that much. And not that I love Georgia's receivers, I'm very fascinated. Like Georgia has talked a lot about maybe, or not talked about, but Georgia fans have talked a lot about, hey, we have these three stud tight ends. Maybe we'll play a lot of like 13 personnel, which would be pretty wild. <laughs> I'm not really sure Oregon's the team you want to do that against. I think you mm -hmm. ideally you'd want to spread Oregon out. Uh, but I think George is better. All right. While we're uh while we're here playing the hits and we've mentioned Utah a couple times, anybody getting in on Florida, Utah? Because I've got to play. Let's hear, Let's hear it. it. Right. Over. I think that if Florida like so. Let's just let's play this out as though it's going to be right there along the point spread. I don't think Florida's defense is the reason that Florida would be close. If Florida's close in this game, I think Anthony Richardson has had a successful time playing against this Utah team. And 51, 52 points, not, not a ton to ask when you've got a, a player like Cam Rising on one side and a Utah offense that, I mean, this... It, it seems as though I need to remind fans that this is not hand the ball to Devontae Booker 35 times and then just kick field goals and punt. Like ever since Andy Ludwig took over, like all the way back to when Tyler Huntley got this thing rolling, like this is an offense that gets moving, hits explosive plays, puts points on the board. And I think that Florida's defense was not a plus value group last year. And personnel wise, I do not think that they are up to par to be in that kind of shutdown group. I think Utah is going to be able to score. And if this game is going to be close, I think that Florida has been able to do it as well. And how do I factor in humidity and, you know, all, all these other like things that are coming into play. It's DBs getting cramps and explosive plays down the field. So I, I think that it is not going to take too many explosive plays for me to be able to get to uh, this total and that if Florida is going to play this close and if Florida is going to threaten for the upset, I see it far more about Florida being able uh, to get some of those skill players that we've been waiting on to arrive for a long time to get some of them loose uh, against this Utah defense. So give me the over in Florida, Utah. I got to play in the game. I'll go ahead and take, Give me the Gators. Oh, Gator, Gator Danny's back. <laughs> Gator Danny is back. Um, Utah has been a trendy pick. I like Utah. I like Kyle Whittingham. I think they could eventually go on to win the Pac-12. This is a rough spot to start week one. Not only do they have to go into all those conditions, they don't know what they're getting. Like, you know, they, they don't know what they're prepping for. They'll go back and they'll watch Billy Napier at Louisiana and try to look at that offense, but that's with a different quarterback. Now they're trying to prep, and they just don't know what they're going to get. I think that is a big advantage, especially playing at home. You know it's going to be loud. Kyle Winningham's been said he's been doing crowd noise all camp, something they don't usually do. I talked to him this morning, too, and I hope he's not listening. 
But I think a full field goal is too much. I think the Gators are going to be primed and ready uh, to go toe-to-toe. I do think it's a close game, but I think the Gators could prevail. But if I'm going to get a full field goal, I'll go ahead and take it. Because I really hope I win the bet and the Gators lose, to be honest. But not that much Gator, Danny. There we go. There we go. The null head. (laughs) No, Whit Whit heard that, and he's like, well, I'm never going back on his show again. Jeez. (laughs) That's right. 